Mom, please tell me it's because you use natural bow and not a nude beach situation. Get flawless, natural-looking color and no tan lines. Jergens. As we say goodbye, I want you to meet a remarkable young woman who will lift your spirit. Cleo Riley is a high school junior who founded Students for Floyd. The group has inspired thousands of students to join Cleo at peaceful demonstrations in Hollywood. What are you hoping to achieve through this organization? My goals right now are obviously just going to protests and showing that we can get a large group of kids together to take action. And then we're also leading happening now. Hundreds of protesters marched from the San Antonio Police Department headquarters to the Bear County Courthouse and back demanding justice. Devin Clark here and coming up will give you a live look. New charges leveled against the officers involved in George Floyd's killing. I'm Nadia Romero in Minneapolis. I'll explain how the family is reacting. And last night, the mayor said he is putting a hold on additional transportation funding. Why Via says they needed just to get by. A few showers to talk about on the radar screen, along with some heat that's headed our way. That and the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal coming right up. Signing in and managing online accounts. Chances are you have different passwords for different things, but the challenge is remembering them all. How one little piece of technology could help out. The News at 5 starts right now. First at five, after days of unrest all across the country, all four former Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's death are now facing charges. In the meantime, the charge against Derek Chauvin, the officer who was seen on video pressing his knee onto George Floyd's neck, have been upgraded from third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter to second-degree murder. The Floyd family's attorney saying holding all four officers accountable is the first step in ensuring the Floyd family is served justice. Let's turn now to several arrests made during another night of protests in downtown San Antonio. At least six teens and one adult all arrested on charges ranging from criminal trespassing, rioting, and evading arrest. Here's a look at four of those men. 19-year-old Carlos Cabrera, 17-year-old Damien Calderon, 24-year-old Brian Sunblade, and 18-year-old Jose de la Cruz. Not pictured here, 18-year-old Damien Bell, 17-year-old Joe Frank, Aramio and 19 year old Jonathan Caballero. And check this out. Fencing has been put up at Alamo Plaza in response to the last few days of protests on its Twitter account. Alamo Plaza said the barriers are in place to quote secure the Alamo end quote. Alamo Plaza will close every night at 830 through Sunday morning. It's unclear how long the blockades will remain in place. And all this happening as hundreds have gathered outside public safety headquarters for what has been a peaceful demonstration that has even included some members of the San Antonio Spurs. However, last night was a different scene. Devin Clark is live at public safety headquarters. And Devin, how are things going out there right now? Well, Isis, it is peaceful out here. We can see that the crowd is growing day by day. Right now, there are about five to 600 people outside of San Antonio Public Safety Headquarters. And like you said, including in this crowd are some notable Spurs players, Lonnie Walker, Brent Ford, and former Spurs player, Sean Elliott. They joined the crowds chanting Black Lives Matter. And after the original chants, they began sharing stories. Many of the protesters started telling their experiences with police brutality. Then the crowd marched to the Bear County Courthouse and back. Last night, though, a very different scene. Yesterday, a protest that began peacefully at the Old Bear County Courthouse transformed into mayhem. A cell phone video captured the moments that a man told a crowd of protesters to put arms in the air to show peace. And then moments later, you can hear shots being fired. Several people, including a local reporter, were shot with either rubber or wooden bullets. A representative with the San Antonio Police Officers Association today releasing a statement which in part says, quote, the officers acted appropriately with the circumstances they were facing, end quote. Mayor Ron Nirenberg promising on Twitter to look into the incident, then releasing a statement calling for SAPD to explain the rules of engagement so that demonstrators will clearly understand what actions will lead to officers dispersing a crowd. Antonio Lee, who helped organize today's protest, wanted to be clear that it was not his group causing the ruckus last night, part of the reason behind marching from SAPD to the Bear County Courthouse. We want to get rid of that barrier between law enforcement and that fear from the community, you know what I mean? And, and try and work together like, hey, 
a lot of the police officers, if you actually just stop and talk to them, they have a lot of sim the similar views as you. They're here to protect us so we can voice our opinion, but we just got to do it peacefully. And aside from voicing opinions out here, some of these protesters are actually taking actionable steps to make change happen. One of the protesters we spoke to, and you'll hear from her coming up at six, explains why she decided to go down to the Bear County Elections Office and become a certified registered voter and also be able to register people to vote. Live outside of the San Antonio Public Safety Headquarters, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. This moment is a tipping point to change America and see if America truly believes in the words of Thomas Jefferson, that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equally. That means black people too. Powerful words from the Floyd family's attorney, Ben Crump, who was discussing human rights in Minneapolis today. We told you earlier in this newscast that all four Minneapolis police officers involved in the death of George Floyd have now been charged. Yeah, the news comes on the same day as the Floyd family visits the location where their loved one died. Nadia Romero is at the memorial in Minneapolis with more now. Nadia. Stand by. Oh, Stephen Ursula, we're at the spot where George Floyd lost his life more than a week ago today. We saw his family members, his son, his brother. His the family of George Floyd celebrating his life where he took his last breath. I'm trying to get just for my father. And no, no man or woman should serve. Without their fathers. Last week, Minneapolis police officers penned the 46-year-old father to the ground. One officer, Derek Chauvin, pressed his knee into Floyd's neck for what police say was nearly nine minutes. Chauvin is in custody, charged with Floyd's death. The other three officers involved are now also charged, according to Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. We absolutely believe that he was tortured in the last eight minutes and 46 seconds of his life. The killing prompted protests across the country and around the world as people demanded racial equality and an end to police brutality. Like the demonstrators, Minnesota's governor says injustice needs to stop. I think being at the heart of this and, and seeing the community's pain so viscerally, this is... This is going to have to be that change we look for. Now, the Minneapolis Police Department is under investigation for civil rights abuses. The state is looking at the past decade to see if the police has systematic discriminatory practices. I don't think we get another chance to fix this. As the investigation into Floyd's death continues, his family prepares to say a final goodbye. So, Isis, we know that tomorrow will be a big day of celebration and mourning here in Minneapolis, where we'll have the memorial service for George Floyd. But originally, he's from the Houston, Texas area, and that's where on Monday he will be laid to rest in front of all of his friends and family. Live in Minneapolis, I'm Nadia Romero. Isis, back to you. And Nadia, the charges against this former Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chauvin, have been upgraded from third degree to second degree murder. Can you tell us what that change means? Yeah, third degree murder basically means that you were so negligent in your actions that it led to the death of someone else, but you weren't intending to kill them. Second degree murder, that's what he's now charged with, says that he knew that his actions would kill someone and he didn't care, that he continued those actions. The Minneapolis police code says that for a police officer, it specifically means that you killed someone while they were uh, apprehended or in handcuffs, and that's what we saw with George Floyd. So now that charge for Officer Flo uh, Chauvin who's now a former officer, he's been fired, has been upgraded. The other three officers have been charged as well. Nadia Romero reporting live from the streets of Minneapolis. Thank you, Nadia. And thousands of people peacefully protested for justice in George Floyd's death yesterday afternoon in Houston as the demonstration moved into the night. More than 200 people accused of engaging in criminal conduct were arrested. Despite what Houston police called a, quote, relatively low amount of misconduct, the mayor of Houston, Sylvester Turner, tweeting out, quote, 60,000 people from across our diverse city marched peacefully 
with the family of George Floyd, and I could not be more proud of Houston, end quote. Well, this just in, Governor Greg Abbott is moving forward with phase three of reopening Texas. Yeah, effective immediately, all businesses operating at 25% capacity can expand their occupancy to 50% with certain exceptions. Bars and similar establishments may increase their capacity to 50% as long as patrons are seated. Restaurants may expand their maximum table size from six to 10 people. Restaurants may expand their occupancy levels to 75% next week. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy has resigned after he and his wife were arrested overnight. San Antonio police say 41 year old deputy Luis Lopez fired multiple shots outside his South Side home and he's and his 40 year old wife Valerie Lopez tried interfering with his arrest. Officers were called to the home on West Mallee Boulevard around 3 a.m. They found 10 shell casings on the ground and an empty pistol holder along with former Deputy Lopez, who police say was heavily intoxicated. While handcuffing Lopez, police say he threw himself to the ground, smacked an officer's body camera off him, wouldn't let the officers close the door to the patrol car, and was banging his head against the window. They say during the arrest, Lopez's wife pulled on one of the officers and disregarded instructions to go inside the house. She was arrested and charged with interfering with a public servant. Luis Lopez faces charges of resisting arrest and discharging a firearm in a heavy, heavily populated area. Lopez had been with the sheriff's office since October 2018. It's another steamy day across South Texas and the Alamo City there. You get the hazy conditions, just some fair weather clouds popping up. Some of them are a little taller than others and a few have developed a few brief showers, but nothing like what we saw yesterday in terms of those tropical downpours. Eagle Pass now at 93, we're 91 in shirts. Leon Springs at 88 degrees. And for the most part, we're right around 90, give or take just a few degrees. Taking a look at the radar, sea breeze came in, kickstarted some of the showers along the coastline. Some of that activity now is migrating its way closer to San Antonio, but again, not much out there. Not, not as widespread as what we had yesterday. But you get into Carnes County, a little bit of lightning with that downpour, and you head east of town and a few downpours near Lavaca County and Gonzales. We'll, we'll be back with the latest on Tropical Storm Cristobal coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Via Metropolitan Transit and its supporters warning today that backing away from additional transportation funding could have bad consequences for Via riders. In his State of the City address last night, Mayor Ron Nuremberg announced city leaders would not ask voters to redirect a one eighth cent sales tax toward transportation funding in November's plan. The money was originally meant to fund transit improvements at Via included in the Connect SA plan. But former Mayor Henry Cisneros, who helped develop that plan, says that because of the pandemic, the transit agency now needs it just to maintain current services. He warned against finding a different use for the sales tax. If the result of trying to allocate money in one area results in tearing apart a system that people depend on for their daily jobs, incomes, family needs, medical visits, school trips, we can do better than that. We've got to find a way to work this out. You're coming up at 6 o'clock here from VIA's board chair, Hope Andrade. And from social media to online bills and banking, remembering all your passwords can be a challenge. That's where a good password manager comes in handy. Up next, 12 on your side's top picks for keeping your accounts secure. Stay with us. And new at five, passwords. Chances are you got a bunch of them, and remembering them while making sure they're secure can be a challenge. That's where a good password manager comes in. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us which ones will keep you and your accounts secure. Remembering all of your passwords is tough. Making sure each one is unique and strong enough to keep hackers out can be even tougher. A password manager, basically an app or online service, can do it for you. Consumer Reports put some to the test. In our testing, we focused on three main factors, security, privacy, and usability. 
Security means how resistant it is to hacking attempts. Privacy is how much data it collects, what it's used for, and who it's shared with. And usability includes how flexible the password manager is when it comes to sharing between platforms and devices. With password managers, you only have to remember one password your master password for the password manager. That's because they create, store, and automatically fill in complex passwords for the dozens of sites and apps you may log into each day. And these kinds of services use encryption, which means your passwords are scrambled into codes that are hard for hackers to crack. So which one did the best in CR's tests? Our experts say that 1Password is the best option out there. It was the only password manager we tested that received excellent ratings in all three categories. If you want a free alternative, CR recommends Bitwarden. It scored very good for privacy, data security, and usability. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Take a live look outside with sky 12, 87 degrees out there. As you can see, the crowd still pretty large outside uh, the downtown area where they are gathering in protest of the George Floyd killing. Yeah, and, and you can tell the temperature inching ever so higher out there, Adam. Yeah, we're starting to get a little bit warmer, and if you think this is hot, just wait until you see what's coming down the pike, especially as we get into the early part of next week. Then it uh, looks like we'll be... Right around the triple digit mark. OK, so we'll talk about that in a moment, but we have tropical storm Cristobal to talk about, along with a little bit of activity on the radar screen. So there's the shower activity. It's just highly isolated in nature, but it's those tropical downpours that big have the big fat, juicy raindrops. It pours for a couple of minutes and then you get the sunshine. Actually, very good rainbow making weather out there as well. So if you're east of town, and you get one of these downpours. Put your back to the sun and hopefully once it passes, you'll see a rainbow. This activity was started basically along the sea breeze as it moved through earlier today, came off the ocean and that sea breeze then uh, kick started some of these showers and thunderstorms and not much in terms of thunder, but you know, Little downpour here in Carn City. They had a little bit of lightning detected with it, so some thunder as well. Yoakum to just west of Hallettsville between Gonzales and Hallettsville. And you look at the past six hours, and this shows you the evolution of this activity. Here comes the sea breeze, and look at that. There are all those showers that develop along it. Now we're just dealing with some outflows and what's left of that breeze. So here's the bigger picture. Big Blue H just off to our west. There's the upper level high over northern Mexico. That's going to slowly start to influence our weather even more in the coming days. That's going to have those temperatures go up and rain chances go down. Tropical storm Cristobal max winds at 50 miles per hour. Not a strong system, but big rainmaker, big time rainmaker here in the Yucatan. And it's just sitting there hardly even moving at all. And in terms of its future movement, we're still just expecting it to meander a bit over the Yucatan. Notice Friday noon basically right on the west coast of the Yucatan, then into the weekend starts moving into the central Gulf of Mexico. And at some point on Sunday is when it may affect part of the Gulf coastline here, anywhere from far east Texas through New Orleans, Mississippi, Alabama. And right now it looks like it'll mostly be a rain event more than anything. Keep in mind, sometimes these systems are good drought busters. And sometimes we rely on them. Now, we're not going to get any moisture from that, and we're actually in a pretty good position right now due to our recent rainfalls. But at some point, we may need the remnants of a tropical system. Look at temperatures across the state. You can see where we're having some showers. That's where it's a little bit cooler. 81 in Houston, 79 LaGrange, 87 here in San Antonio. Meanwhile, 95 in Del Rio, and we're currently 91 in New Braunfels. But you feel that mugginess outside. Dew points up there. It's at that oppressive level at 71 degrees, so a lot of moisture in the air. And that leads to some of those tropical downpours that have developed. It just adds a little extra fuel to them. But for the rest of the evening, I anticipate those isolated showers to come to an end over basically the next two to three hours. And then just partly cloudy conditions overnight and a little extra cloud cover to start the day tomorrow. We'll start the day at 73. That's at 7 a.m. Then at noon, 85, 92, the high temperature in the afternoon and a lot of sunshine. Southeast really breeze at 5 to 10 and thick humidity yet again. So it'll feel like it's in the mid 90s when you factor in that humidity. And here's that trend upward, OK? 94 Saturday, 90, I mean 94 Friday, 95 Saturday. Here we go. You get into Sunday, Monday, upper 90s. And yeah, we are forecasting our first triple digit day. 
That would be on Tuesday. We have yet to hit 100 this year. Hey, we may just do that early next week. Get ready. All right. Thanks so much, Adam. Ouch. All right. There was a time where I'd basically given up. I figured the Spurs aren't going to play this year. Yeah. Look forward to next year. I apparently was wrong, Greg. If they adopt this plan, the Spurs are in and they're headed to Disney World. When we come back, the 22 team restart seems to be the plan that will be approved. We'll let you know what that means. And this young man is staying a Bulldog from Somerset to TLU coming up. The NBA Board of Governors will approve tomorrow the 22-team restart proposal to continue the NBA season suspended by the coronavirus in March. It would include eight regular season games for a play-in tournament for the playoffs that will include the Spurs. Now, that's according to ESPN. It says the plan includes 13 Western Conference teams. Nine Eastern Conference teams are within six games of the eighth and final playoff spot. Besides the top 16 teams, the plan to restart at Disney World in Orlando on July 31st will include the Spurs, Pelicans, Trailblazers, Keen Suns, and the Washington Wizards. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, who has been outspoken against President Donald Trump in light of the protests that have occurred as a result of the death of George Floyd while in police custody in Minneapolis, appeared on the Ringer's Flying Coach podcast. Pop says he struggled to explain the events to his granddaughter, who saw the incident on television. I was dumbfounded. I didn't, I turned it off. And then I thought, should I have left it on and explained it to her? Or... Uh, how do I explain it to her now that I've turned it off? And I, I made some feeble attempt, uh, but I didn't know how far to go, how deep to go. What age is it? Is it she ready or not ready? And I thought, wow, that's a problem for me. And then I thought, what about a black family? Do you think they have a problem talking to their kids? and figuring out what's going on here. Further, I'm currently Appearing on their own podcast, former Spur, now Golden State Warriors head coach Steve Kerr and Seattle Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll, who said, we owe a tremendous amount to Colin Kaepernick, who took a knee during the national anthem to protest police brutality and social injustice. Congratulations to Hunter Hernandez, who signed his letter of intent today to play football for Texas Lutheran University. Now, the Somerset Bulldog rushed for over 1,800 yards for Sonny Detmer and then suited up in the San Antonio Sports All-Star Game in the Alamo Dome, where he had 107 yards and one touchdown. Today, signing his letter of intent at Somerset High School. It's a big experience being able to sign for college and go off to my next chapter in life. He's been working for this dream for, for 10, 15 years that I know. So. And uh, but but for today, for him uh, to go off and end up for that's that's the main thing for furthering the education. And uh, it's just a fantastic day here at Bulldog Nation when we have some kid that steps up and moves on to the next level. So he's going from being a bulldog in Somerset to being a bulldog now in Seguin for TLU. That's just great different story. colors. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Sure. We'll be right back. And before we go, we want to show you one last look from Sky 12, where, as you can see, those protesters are on the move. They started at police headquarters a little earlier, as we showed you in this newscast, now moving along the downtown area. Yeah, it, it actually looks like they may be heading back towards the Bear County Courthouse, which has also been the scene of several protests this week. Again, we are continuing to follow uh, the situation. Again, a peaceful protest. Uh, that we have seen for a lot of afternoons uh, since mm -hmm. since the death of George Floyd. But then it's when the, the sun goes down and somehow it seems to move towards the Alamo when things get a little different. But right now, a very peaceful protest in support of justice and police reform as they head back towards the Bear County Courthouse. Of course, we'll continue to monitor this situation. I'll see you at six.